Uh, tonight's uh, presenter is Alex Kohler, who resides at Ellicott City, Maryland on CSX's Old Main Line. Alex became interested in model trains when he was a year old, courtesy of his grandfather, Lou Kohler, who had an extensive multi-scale model train collection and operating railroad. As he grew older, his grandfather and parents would occasionally take him out to go rail fanning locally and ride many local and national tourist railroads. Alex is also deeply into model trains as well now. He was dedicated to HO scale until April 2020 when he uh, gradually transitioned to O scale, uh, including several Lionel post-war pieces and many modern O scale pieces as well. Uh, he began making uh, train videos in 2002 until late 2015 when he purchased his first Canon DSLR. He's been shooting digital photos since then. Alex is a teacher for the Baltimore County mm -hmm. Public School System. So the photos I was asked to share with everybody um, are all my uh, photographs of steam engines either leading on mainline excursions uh, or on tourist lines. So these is um, some of the most extensive um, part of my collection on. I'll be sharing several um, different notable steam locomotives and maybe some lesser known ones to, um, to the rail fan community. Um, so we're going to start off with West Maryland Scenic Railroad long before 1309 came about. Uh, this was in December of 2015 at Ridgely Yard. Um, you have, of course, GP3502 there. Uh, Western Maryland Scenic 734. I believe this was in an evening time. Um, they were running trains uh, during the day and we got word that uh, 734 is doing some type of dinner train. Um, so we stuck around, um, did that. So here it is coming across the bridge of the, um, what is it, the North Branch of the Potomac River coming into um, Cumberland Station. Um, here it is at the station itself with the uh, many of the passengers uh, partaking in the ride. And of course, there's a crew member on the ground getting um, 734 uh, ready to go for the evening's run. And then this was the next day. Um, so this, this was a Sunday in December. And here it is um, on one of the regularly scheduled excursion trains pulling in uh, to the station, again, crossing the north branch of the uh, Potomac River. And of course, notable uh, scenes at uh, Helmstetter's Curve. Um, and believe it or not, these are my only photos that I had of 734 before it went down and the emphasis went on restoring the uh, Chesapeake and Ohio 1309. So again, didn't spend much time up in this area at all doing video or photos. So unfortunately, I don't have much to offer uh, as far as um, 734 goes. So anyway, so moving on to that. So we move on to the West Maryland Scenic um, 1309. This was during the um, excursions, um, the Trains Magazine Charter that was led by uh, Jim Wren, uh, Kevin Gulliam, and Michael Summers back in uh, February. Uh, Bill Holdsworth and Bob Kaplan invited me to go on that Saturday. I believe it was February um, 26. So um, this is um, partly into the day's festivities this is at Helmstetter's Curve. Uh, where they did a um, series of run buys. So um, with the several run buys, oh gosh, they must have done probably close to 10 here. So it gave all the photographers um, in attendance to get a multitude of different shots. As you can see here, I believe the train might be backing down here to get in position for a um, another run by. So again, just the number of run buys here just gave um you a litany of opportunities to get different angles of the engine nice. running around um helm series there's a close-up of 734 um coming around the curve really like the shot with all the steam uh the steam you know coming out simming out of the engine was really really nice alex then, do, yes. you happen to, do you happen to know why or if or yeah why the overfire jets were not installed uh, on that engine uh, when I, I i don't know the technicalities of do you mean as, as far as how the em the engine was being in operation that day or, or what? Well, they, they haven't been re uh, installed or reinstalled, I should say. It, it, it was built with them, and I just wondered what if, if anybody knows. Maybe somebody else knows why. No. Um, um, let's see. I think uh, Gary Benzman and uh, Howard Pincus are on Facebook. Those are guys that are involved 
in the operation. You know, Wesley Hines, who I think is the, the executive director of the, those might be the guys to uh, get in touch with and ask. I am and not exactly um, sure, um, you know, what they did or did not do as far as the restoration goes. I wish I did, but unfortunately, um, I don't have an answer for you on that. Okay. 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 So I, I apologize for not having the information on that. So anyway, um, so then uh, Bill, Bob, Kaplan, and I, we relocated to uh, Mount Savage, where they have an old West Maryland uh, signal bridge still um, staying, which adds a nice little um, photo prop. So here it is um, coming um, around Mount Savage. It's, it's on its way to um, a spot called the Coal Tipple, is what the, the Grenoble Coal Tipple used to be back in the West Maryland days. So it's on its way to a... Um, um, another spot for the um the uh photographers on the photo chart day so here's a wide angle of it coming through mount savage really really nice sun here and then of course um next easy spot to chase it to was up to um frostburg proper itself um so here it is uh, coming into um frostburg depot beautiful white plume of smoke um blue skies great sun really added a a great contrast and splash of color um on this day so now this now I have to, I'm I'm still in debt to uh, member Jim Kleeman. This was on the Sunday, um, the last day of the photo charter, and if it wasn't for Jim offering me an extra ticket he had due to a, a friend of ours that had to leave for a family emergency, I never would have gotten these shots. So again, th Jim, thank you again for the free hotel room and the ticket this day. So this is on Sunday, I believe it was February 27th of this year, and this is in the Narrows. This was the first spot they took us to for the day. And we got here before the sun was up. So we had to wait, I'd say, a good 20 minutes or so to a half an hour before the sun came right over the mountain to kind of get that glint off the side of the engine. But we see that the results are dramatic and great. So here's kind of a zoom shot of the engine slowly um, approaching the photo line. And uh, here's a wide angle shot across um, the uh, waterbed um, in the narrow. So real, real, real nice lighting and um, lighting in view here. And then, of course, we moved back to Helmstairs Curve again for uh, several more runbys. Again, we, we couldn't have asked for um, better weather both days. And uh, here, uh, I believe this is on the Helmstairs farm here. So the uh, the family was gracious enough to allow the photographers to use their land to walk around and get a, a bunch of different varying photo angles. And here we are on the ground at the Helmstairs farm. And here in the foreground, you see... Um, a bunch of different type of uh, farm equipment and apparatuses. And then, so just another shot of 1309 um, coming up the grade for another photo run by. Um, and then here, this is a shot we we're all hoping for. We all went down to, um, the family had um, some cows out in the field and we were hoping that uh, they would stay in place um, for- Stable cows. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes I've been out like up at Strasburg and the train comes and the whistle starts blowing and the cows and horses get spooked and they run off. But luckily the cows here stayed just in place as um, 1309 was uh, rounding the bend for another photo run by. So really liked how you got both machine and um, presence of life all in the same shot right here. So again, another shot at, at, at Helms there has just made the most of the opportunities here. Why uh, we, we stopped here. Now here we're moving on. This is the spot that was called the Coal Tipple. Again, I assume there was an old Coal Tipple here back in the West Maryland days. So um, can't remember um, if this was a spot that there was a lot. It was either here or Garners, where there was a lot of brush and trees here. And volunteers came out a couple weeks prior to um, the charter and did some extensive um, tree cutting, brush cutting. So many thanks to those folks that were involved in that. I know Jim Kleeman was involved in that effort. So many thanks. It was either here at or Garner's further up the line where they did that to afford us these um, other angles that would be rather tricky, if not impossible to get if it uh, wasn't for the brush cutting. So here's the um, trains either backing down or coming around um, uh, the curve here at um, the Cold Tipple for another run by. And then here's just a uh, broadside flanking view of the train, real nice plume of smoke, real nice definition, just real, real nice shots, great sun angle. Um, I think Michael Summers and Kevin Gilliam did a great job researching the sun angles um, prior to, um, you know, formulating and organizing the trip, which is key you know, for taking quality photographs if you're um, shooting both video and still photographs. And here we're back into um, Frostburg where um, there would be a several hour layover 
and all the photographers that were on the train would go and uh, be offered food for lunch. So I uh, gave a chance for people to, you know, take a nap, um, you know, walk around, get more shots, of the engine with the depot or whatever they want to do. Now this is um, Garner. So there's a little backstory to this location. This was on the way back um, toward Cumberland. And um, to my surprise, they had the precision leasing corp um, engines, formerly of the George's Creek Railroad. They had two West Maryland. They had one uh, units. One was an ST35. One was an ST40 powering the, um, the passenger train carrying the photographers. And on the way back, one of those suffered a mechanical problems. So the train was deemed was not safe to go back down the mountain with one locomotive. So they had to go, uh, the West Maryland Scenic crew had to go back um, to Ridgely and round up uh, GP3501, the one that's painted in the circus scheme to come and rescue our train. So while that was being done, it, this allowed us extra time here at Garner's to get several different shots of the engine um, uh, going up and down the grade here around the curve. So just, again, just many different shots here. Really, really nice, nice shots of the train um, here at the uh, crossing on the uh, rail trail right here. Nice sun on the on the smoke box. And then uh, then we we're done doing run bys. The crew posed the train um, for about 10 or 15 minutes before the passenger train came back and posed it for static shots right here as well. So you kind of had a, a take your pick of static shots of the engine while I was sitting there as well. Of course, always love the Dramax with steam with how you get when they open the cylinder cocks to um, clear all the excess water out of the cylinders before they move. So I was able to capture um, that shot right here. I believe the um, the train was moving forward so the passenger train could come back up the mountain and uh, pick us photographers up to move us to the last spot. And here was the final spot of the day. This is at Helmsteaders. My, my only, um, this is probably the only downfall of the whole trip, I think. Um, of course, that delay with the train, with one of the uh, engines having mechanical issues, um, didn't do any favors, and we couldn't get back here quite in time where the sun was just starting to dip below the mountain behind us. And we, as you can see with the photo here, we still got, you know, decent results with us on the engine, but it was far better if we would have gotten here probably about 15 or 20 minutes um, sooner. But all in all, it was a great trip. And I'm glad the late Jim Rain was able to see it before his passing. And again, it was a great effort by him, Michael Summers, and Kevin Gilliam. So many thanks to all of them for the efforts and resources and time they put in to um, making that trip. And on Saturday, it's back on Saturday night, um, I noticed while I was waiting um, to um, meet up with Jim, um, while they were having dinner on the train, I saw a bunch of people were down doing long exposures um, on one of the bridges crossing the uh, north branch of the Potomac. I was able to go down there and fire off some long exposure night shots, which I really like doing uh, seen here. So I um, did a couple of those and picked out the, the, the two best shots. I like the color of the sky here. And you have the silhouette of the engine reflecting off of the still water here, which uh, made for some really, really, really nice um, uh, long exposure um, shots. Alex, has yes. the, uh, has the uh, turntable lead problem up at uh, Frostburg been figured out yet? No, that's going to, I mean, that that's going to involve, I think, stuff with the county. They're going to have to redo the road. A lot of us have inquired about that up there, and that's really going to take a lot of, of, of rigmarole to get that straightened out. And it sounds like it's not going to happen anytime soon. So it, it sounds like there's a lot of different, different Andes that have to be um, consulted to, um, get the track, I think, realign. You have to tear up the road there and and, and do a bunch of extra leg work to um, go ahead and to get that um, to get that uh, corrected. So it's to be determined in the future, and it's just kind of in a holding pattern right now. I think it's going to require a great uh, deal of money to um, go ahead and to get that completed. I heard the curve was too great for the engine which was kind of surprising since it's an articulated engine but yeah that's correct that's correct that's why i heard too and it considering the engine is articulated it is kind of surprising that they're having an, an issue um there okay all right so so moving on so luckily um i was a beneficiary of i never got to see the um nw611 when she initially ran under the norfolk southern steam program back in the late 70s i mean excuse me the late 80s and early 90s i was um too young to know what I was looking at. So luckily I was a beneficiary 
of when uh, Wick Mormon, prior CEO of Norfolk Southern, um, helped lead an effort to get the J running again. So I was able to go down and do um, uh, and chase a couple of the excursion. This particular um, one is covering um, excursions they did back in June of 27 or 2016, um, running on NSSB line from Manassas to Front Royal. And here uh, the train is is not far out of Manassas, going um, up the B line down to um, Front Royal. And this is passing, I think, a Vulcan stone complex right in Manassas right here. And here we go. This is the Plains, Virginia. So this is, um, I think, well known among people that um, photograph um, down on Norfolk Southern's B line. This is the J coming around the curve um, at the Plains on the B line. And then this is um, along Happy Creek Road. This is getting near Front Royal. Um, now, when you're chasing the B line, it's kind of hard to chase. You're lucky if you got two or three good shots um, each way between. Um, you know, Front Royal and um, Manassas and not knowing uh, the territory that well. I was lucky able to get what I got. And here's the J um, nearing um, Front Royal before it, it will turn and go back um, to Manassas. And here it is, it's, it's turned, it's heading back toward uh, Manassas. Now again, this is uh, the outer um, Front Royal area on the way back um, to uh, Manassas. And this area is a um, little town of Markham, Virginia. Um, this afforded uh, a lot of great angles on both the uh, trip going down and coming back. So um, myself and a couple of friends uh, spent a great deal of time here um, photographing um, both ways. So here it is coming around the curve at Markham, wide angle shot and zoom shot of the train coming at you. And then here it is again, uh, relocated. This is the next day. Um, um, down at the Plains, you see the old depot right here off the right-hand side, which um, um, add a nice little um, photo props. So here it is coming back around the Plains uh, past the old depot. And then this is back in Markham again. So this is a little bit better weather this day. Beautiful sun. Got the train coming through. Um, nice wooded area here. Uh, so that's nice, some uh, nice photography um, here in Markham again. And again, um, kind of anemic weather. So you see it was sunny back there and here it is approaching Front Royal again and and now it's um, kind of overcast. So here it is um, coming around um, a curve um, in Front Royal and here it is. We figured we might as well just stay here and wait for it to turn at Front Royal and come back. So here it is, the train slowly um, leaving Front Royal headed back um, toward Manassas. And then uh, this spot again, this is long, uh, at Markham. So even though we hit Markham a lot, we tried to hit and uh, and get some uh, varying angles that want to you know hit the same old same old so here the engine is i'm at mark and you can tell by the photo it's nice and grimed up it's got a bunch of cold dust and stairs all over it so you can definitely tell the engine has been out running and working all weekend with no with no bath in between and then this is in uh this is in uh wellington virginia this is um not far outside of manassas so this was i think uh concluding um the day um heading back toward uh, manassas to um round out um, the day of operations there. And here we go, um, back in 2016, I went down to the North Carolina uh, Transportation Museum for the first time. Um, as many of you all know, um, the Jay spent many times down there um, doing at the throttle experiences where people could spend, I think it's at least 600 bucks to like run the engine um, um, back and forth. Uh, I think from the depot grounds down to, I think what they call it Barber Junction, which is close to the um, NS Main. So people got to um, you know run that back and forth. Now this weekend, of course, she went to go visit. Um, she was not under steam. It was the weekend where she had off, and there there were no at the throttle um, um, experiences scheduled. But still glad to see her nonetheless. Just took a couple shots for her sitting on display at the uh, museum grounds. Uh, Alex, is that water yeah. column operational there? Um, that I I am not sure. I like I said, I was not down there when they were doing the at the throttle. Um, Run so I didn't get to see if they if they watered the engine that way or if they had the fire department come and water it so that uh, I am not sure but obviously they had, they they had to have a water source because they steamed up the engine you know uh, from dead cold down there they had an air compressor on site and of course with steam you have to have a water line so they probably either you know had a water hose down there a water tank or something but I can't answer whether or not the um, if the uh, the the water spigot here was active or not. And I had to, I wasn't supposed to do this, but the engine was sitting here. And this is me. I had to go up and climb up and get in the cab of the engine. And um, 
Uh, I'm going to tell you guys, I was up in there. I was geeking out. It, it was hot. First off, it was hot as hell down that weekend. It was probably the heat index was over 100 degrees. I was dying, but I had to go up and climb in the cab of the engine and go check it out. And um, no, I came and yelled at us where I don't think anybody saw us, but I was in there for a good 45 minutes geeking out, just sitting in the sack. It sat in the engineer's you know, seat of, of um yeah, the 611, and God knows how many stories that seat would have told over the years of that, with that engine um, um, in service, and then of course late Claters, and then um, you know, late NNW engineer uh, uh, Frank Collins that used to run on the excursions back in the 80s. The stories that engine could tell in that seat could tell, um, you know, back in the day. So now this trips they also ran back in 2017. So a year later they ran. Um, between um, Lynchburg and Petersburg, Virginia, on Norfolk Southern's main line. So uh, this was this was really great. I did this back when they did the the um, second restoration back in 2015. Uh, uh, Jonathan uh, Oakler and I went down and did this together, but not this time. But back when I was doing doing video, I think it was back in 2015. Uh, Jonathan and a, my friend Matt and I went all down and did that. But this is when I um, switched to still. So this is um, outside of Lynchburg, crossing the Opossum Creek um, trestle, which was um, really, really nice. And then here, the, the great timing here, um, as we know, pretty much any CPL signal of any kind from any railroad, whether it's B&O, Penn C, NNW, whatever, had really fallen, you know, in several years. And luckily, while we were down here, the NNW CPLs were still up on the line at most places. And this is in, um, this is in Pamplin, Virginia. And here at this interlocking, luckily, um, there were some NWCPLs still up. You could tell the days are numbered with the new safe train Darth Vader signals um, right behind them. So thank God they were still up and really adds an NW flavor and character to this weekend and these trips. Uh, so here the and luckily um, and here the, is the train arriving in Crew. Um, Crew Virginia was like the midway point on the run between um lynchburg and petersburg and they would uh, ns would swap crews there and it would give you a chance to get ahead of the train and um um you know, pick different spots online and photographs so i believe this is the train coming in the crew uh in preparation for a crew change and a um a short layover so this is coming into the crew yard limits right here and then this is actually in uh crew yard itself uh the train has done its um crew swap with norfolk southern and the train is underway now, leaving the yard. So it was going so slow, I was able to bang off a couple of different shots of it, uh, wide angles and zoom angles. There's a, a zoom angle of the engine uh, leaving crew and um, onwards to Petersburg. And um, uh, right here, so this is um, not far out of Petersburg. So I caught up again with the train in Petersburg, and that's where the train's destination was. So. Um, here it is, um, uh, eastbound, almost completing its eastbound leg in the Petersburg. Then uh, here it is again, getting close, is able to um, catch up with again, getting close to the Petersburg. And of course, um, while we were down here, had to survey the scene. This was a scene in downtown Petersburg, all the uh, rail fans that uh, were down in attendance. So I just had to um, take this scene to kind of show the crowd that was down there to um, see uh, the engine's arrival and to marvel at it during its layover before um, returning um, to uh, Lynchburg. So we see it's uh, fairly well attended. And here it is on its return run, heading back toward- um, I am not saying anything. Back toward, um, back toward uh, Lynchburg. So- um, We're stuck. So it's departing. Um, I think believe this is um, east of Fort Virginia on the way back. And um, this is um, Blackstone, Virginia. So you could see, um, starting to lose a little light here, but this is around the curve in Blackstone, Virginia, heading heading back um, toward Lynchburg. Then here it is um, back um, in crew again. So this is for the return trip back to Lynchburg and it's um, doing its crew swap here. And um, the train is just departing um just departing crew there and then here we caught back up with the train this is pamplin again so even though it's the same location i hit 
um, every time I wanted to get um, different varying photo angles. So this is Ryan, a nice um, country scene in Pamplin, Virginia. And then um, uh, this is Pamplin again, I believe this is a, a low angle shot I did. So again, I just tried to um, vary um, the, the different shots to uh, make them um, interesting. All right. So here, I think here it is, the train's getting um, close to um, uh, crew again. So I was able to wait for it and intercept it. And I think this is, I think the train is coming to crew again, and this is departing the crew change and it's on its way again, heading back toward Petersburg. So I was able to wait for it at a uh, grade crossing and intercept it coming around a uh, curve. Um, just outside of uh, Crew, Virginia. So up, up here it is again, nice um, uh, broad level shot of the engine, nice plume of smoke. And then um, this is um, uh, just west of Ford, Virginia, um, getting close back to Petersburg again. And then here it is again, a lot of, lot of shots in the same locations, but again, tried to vary vary the um, shots we got. So here it is, um, uh, late afternoon, early evening, um, leaving crew on its way back to um, Lynchburg to wrap up the, the weekend. And here it is, uh, passing by another set of NNW CPL still staying in, in Pamplin, um, not far outside of um, Lynchburg. And I have to credit my friend, Steve Panopoulos, who is with me on this trip. Um, he noticed this shot, never tried a sun, kind of like a, a sunset shot before. So I took his advice and I think it's a nice dramatic shot of the train going off into the sunset. And this is outer Lynchburg. So the train's not far from concluding its, its, um, its weekend of runs um, between uh, Lynchburg and Petersburg. So here it is going off into the sun. And I got to give a uh, partial credit to my friend, Steve Panopoulos for helping uh, propose this idea for a shot. And for anyone that's a fan of, of Varnish, it had a real nice, um, I think, um, CB and Q uh, California Zephyr observation car that brought up the markers of the uh, train all weekend. So it was really, really nice and really like the glint of the sun off the stainless steel side of that CB and Q um, California Zephyr um, observation car. All right, so moving on, we move on to the Reading Blue Mountain in Northern. Um, this was my first time chasing the um, 425. So again, never saw it when it was painted black back in the 80s and early 90s because I was a wee, a wee little lad and uh, again, wouldn't know what I'll be looking at. So here it is. This is in September of 2017. Uh, this was when it was doing um, uh, trips for the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway. So here the engine is in uh, downtown uh, Jim Thorpe uh, repositioning itself to um, tie on uh, to the train to make a a uh, run to the to the lehigh gorge real dramatic photo here like the derail sign and of course i'm a sucker for steam shots with the cylinder cocks open because it just shows you that a steam engine is a, a living breathing machine it just really adds a lot of drama to um, the photos so really 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 like this shot and then of course it's tied on to the train now and here it is right outside the depot in jim thorpe um, waiting to depart on um, one of the trips up the Lehigh Gorge. And then here it is. This is um, along the trail. This is at Glen Anoko. So I'm sure uh, many people in the group are familiar with that. Um, all this is accessed um, by the bike trail. So if you want these type of shots, you have to A, get there early enough to find a parking spot before all the, um, the tourists and, and recreationalists come, either hikers or bikers come and take up the spot. So this is a long, uh, and the cut at Glen Anoko right here. And then um, again, this is in the, Glen, the uh, Glen Anoko area too. This is not far from where the train uh, crosses the river outside of outside of Jim Thorpe. And the line on, on the left is the rain, Blue Mountain Northern's main line. And uh, the line on the right is Norfolk Southern's main line through the area. And a nice tri-light signal bridge right here added for a nice um, photo prop. And here's the same train, just a little bit more of a wide angle view of the train passing underneath the uh, tri-light signals at uh, Glen Anoko. 
again, I don't think there's exactly a, a town name for this. Again, this is up the trail some. We walk, we park and walk up the trail some more. And here the, the train is um, uh, farther up the gorge, not too terribly far um, where the trip terminates and the engine cuts off and goes to the other, other end of the train and runs uh, tender first back to Jim Thorpe, just like how Strasburg has to run tender first from Strasburg to uh, Lehman Place. Now here it is. This is actually on the main line here. This is on uh, this is on one of their fall foliage excursions that the that the Raid in Northern does in October of each year. And this shot was in Dalverville, Pennsylvania, at the Bellman's Church Road grade crossing. So here the engine is um, not far out of Reading um, on its way uh, to uh, Jim Thorpe. And then uh, catching up with it again. Uh, this is. I guess some people call it a tunnel, some people don't, but this is the um, underpass under up here is Route 93 Hunter Street in Nesquehawning. And this is the underpass that was created for the river to pass underneath. And here the uh, Fall Forge excursion is just coming through the tunnel in uh, Nesquehawning, um, not too far out of Jim Thorpe. Will, the trip will uh, lay over before heading back to um, Reading. Then here, um, don't know how we managed to survive Tamako this time because with uh, 21 to two running again, Tamako has been quite has been quite the bottleneck as far as traffic and rail fans go. And here, uh, 425 is um, slowly pointing to Tamako for a water stop. Here, the fire department uh, wore the engine and wanted to incorporate this fountain, uh, which is like a little uh, city park in the center of town, which added a nice prop in the foreground. So here, the engine is point in, into Tamaqua, what will take on water um, from the local fire department. And here it is, it's pulled up to a stop, sitting here, sitting duck, which um, allowed uh, for um, many different photographs. So um, here it is, just sitting here, uh, waiting to um, pull out of it, to head back toward Reading. And as you can see, uh, they had an open air gondola car. Um, so it was well attended um, uh, with fans and you know, imagine all the type of cinders and smoke and getting sprayed with water they encountered you know up into uh you know jim thorpe right behind a, a steam engine and this is um in hamburg uh, i'm not sure if any people are familiar with this location this is shot at the hearts concrete supply company um, which adds for a nice uh, photo prop if you want industry in your photos now the concrete supply company um is behind me in this shot but those who are interested it provides a nice backdrop for um, trains running westbound from uh, Reading to Jim Thorpe. And here um, uh, the train um, is heading back toward um, Reading and we're losing light here fast. So I had to bump up the ISO and open the aperture up some to give the impression that uh, to, to lighten up the photos some here. Now this, um, I'm not exactly sure where this was. This is, was a, another trip um, in 2017. I believe this is the curve that's coming around to the straight at Miller's Crossing, which is known on the railroad in Orwigsburg. But somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I believe this is the curve and it's now heading to that long straightaway that goes through Miller's Crossing, um, passing through uh, Orwigsburg, uh, Pennsylvania, which is another uh, widely um, known photographic spot for rail fans on the rain in Northern. And this spot, I don't know why I did not notate. This is farther, um, farther up the line. Um, and I'm not exactly sure where the spot was where a uh, shot we pulled off here and saw there's a little bit of fall foliage left on the trees. So uh, we set up camp here and got a decent shot of the train uh, coming around the curve here um, on the main. All right, so now moving on to uh, Walker's also on changing gears to um, short lines here. Uh, now this is a locomotive that is owned by the Gramling family. Um, it's a father and son team. Uh, the father is named John Gramling and his son is named Barney. Um, and they own a bunch of different tank engines. They own this one right here, which is the Lehigh Valley Coal Company 060T number 126. They also own Flag Coal Company 040T number 75. And then they also own uh, Jetto Coal Company 040T number 85, and I believe they have a fourth or fifth engine they're working on now too. But what they do is is that they uh, partner up with a bunch of uh, different um, tourist lines and museums, and they run the engine um, both on the actual train rides themselves and offer 
and also offer experiences for the public to sign up and, and operate the engine to get the fuel for steam engine. So um, this was um, in Walkersville uh, Memorial Day weekend of 2017. And here the engine is at the Walkersville Depot, um, getting in position to tie onto the train for the day. And um, here is a brochure at Walker. Here's some of the equipment. They have a nice nickel plate road bay window caboose. Um, and right here is the trailer that uh, John and Barney um, carry a lot of their materials run in as far as service, servicing the engine goes. And this is uh, preparing to leave uh, to go down um, the line to Walkersville. And the line from Walkersville runs from Walkersville, Maryland, which is uh, uh, northeast of Frederick, and it terminates just south of Frederick or just outside of Frederick, Maryland. And here the engine is down the line. This is one of the more scenic spots in the line. This is the Monocacy Scenic River Bridge. So here I have a zoom level shot of the train coming across um, the bridge. And this is one of the more scenic spots on the line to photograph whatever trains they have running. And uh, here's a, another shot on the other side of the bridge. So here I, I zoomed in pretty good with the train coming across the, uh, the bridge here. And actually here in the shot, the gentleman in the red is John Gramling. So this is the father of the father-son team. So he is part owner of this engine. Like I said, he and his son restored all four of their tank engines on their own over time. And I believe they fought, they bought their first one, which is the um, Fly Coal 75, which they first bought in 91 and did a 10-year restoration on that. And then um, they deem it. A, a a hobby that has gone that has gotten way out of hand their words not mine so here also with that um walkersville also did a real fan photo chart this time it's with the gramlings jetto coal company 040t number 85 and this is on uh, memorial day uh this past year and here we got a couple shots of the engine on the regular train ride first um this is um shot in the woods this is accessed from the fountain rock road grade crossing and you have to kind of have to hike down the right away a little bit back in the woods to get this shot. And then here is one of the props. So if we have any antique car fans on here, you'll like these. Um, this is an, a 1950s Chevy they had as a prop. And here it's being staged to get ready for the rail fan photo charter later in the day. So here the regular train ride is getting ready to pass is to what the railroad refers to um, as the Rotorex crossing. And right behind there, there's a big building where uh, the miscellaneous metals and special event floor technology companies reside. And I believe the railroad refers to that crossing as the Rotorex crossing on the railroad. So here, um, this is right before the, the uh, charter happened. So here's um, um, Jetto Coal 85 and Walkersville's yard. And here it is next to their 45 ton uh, switcher number 45, which provide the power for the passenger train. Um, uh, for the rail fans, I just really like the scene here. I had all the, the simmering smoke and steam with the headlight from the, the uh, 45 turn number 45 piercing through the smoke here. Now, here he is. This is the first spot on the photo charter, and they have two um, antique tractors positioned here. Um, so, any tractor fans on here, here you go. This was a um, nice little scene, and the contest was they had a box car and they had two. Um, uh, Pennsylvania covered hoppers that they nicely restored in the Pennsylvania caboose. And this branch was a branch of the Pennsylvania Railroad. So th they did a real nice restoring these cars specifically for this event. So all the volunteers on the railroad are to be commended for their efforts. And here the engine is passing the Rotorex Cross again. And here um, the, uh, the 50s uh, Chevy's been positioned like um, it's weighing across the track at the train pass. And here's the box car. Oh, excuse me. And then here is the um, restored Penzi covered hopper here, another covered hopper and the Penzi caboose on the back. And here, um, here is a uh, broader view of the bridge spanning the um, Anoxy Scenic River. Um, so again, this is one of the more photogenic spots on the line. So if you're interested in chasing sure at some time, this is definitely a one of the more scenic spots to, to go. And then this is toward the end of the line. This they, the railroad calls this Harmony Grove, and uh, I guess they're simulating a um, a baggage pickup here. Now, why you do a baggage pickup for a, a a steam freight boat charter? I don't know. I guess they just did it for effect. But here they are, train pulling up, and here's one of the railroad volunteers with a bunch of luggage here. I guess simulating that the train is going to stop and uh, pick up baggage at, at this little stop right here.
And then here we go. Here's a, um, again, I'm not an expert on vehicles, but here's an antique truck here that has milk jugs that they position in Walkersville Yard. So they, they pose the train here um, a while for uh, many people to get photos of. And here's the engine um, posed next to this uh, antique uh, milk truck, which is nice. And then even more fun, we have even more antiques car. This is their little ticket office and station here at Walkersville. And here, 85 has moved up for stack shots, which will take place here momentarily. So got the station, an antique car, and an antique 040 tank engine, stuff you won't see every day anymore, all in one shot. And here, um, here's the station itself. Um, so here's the engine uh, position here. Um, you got a luggage baggage car right here, and here's the little station slash ticket office. And the gentleman right here, so this is, we show you the, the father of the father's son, Tanum. This is Barney Ross. This is John's son, the other owner of the engine. And here, um, Barney is, we asked him to simulate like he was um, wiping off the headlight for like an action shot for us photographers. And this is one of the museum's volunteer right now, Mr. Sean Robinson, that was one of the crew members of the day um, observing Barney wiping off the headlight lens of his locomotive. And Barney works the railroad. I know he's involved with the Steam Railroading Institute um, out in Oswaso, Michigan, which is the group that operates, owns, and maintains the Pier Marquette 1225. So Barney is a lifelong railroader himself as an occupation, and then he goes to play with his own trains, as he calls it, when he's not working on the railroad. And here is Sean Robinson doing the same thing, wiping off um, the uh, number plates on the headlight of uh, Jet O'Cole 04085. So really, really neat. Now, can't forget steam without um, um, paying homage to the Strasburg Road. So these photos are between April of 2016 and March uh, 27th of 2021. So um, this is on uh, riding the train itself. This is a shot of uh, 210090 coming to couple up to our train. And then here is 90. This is shot at the um, Carpenter's Grade Crossing, heading up the grade at Lehman Place Junction. So a uh, well-known spot on the Strasburg Railroad. And here it is. We're down at Lehman Place Junction, otherwise known as Paradise, but known as Lehman Place um, on the railroad. This is Amtrak's Keystone Corridor in the background that runs between Philadelphia and um, Harrisburg. Um, and here's 90 running around to tack on the end of the train to run back to East Strasburg Station. And this is shot across the fields at Gross uh, Picnic Grove, which is just by the um, Cherry Crest Adventure Farm. And as you know, um, they at, at the Red Caboose Motel, they have a viewing, a viewing silo. So it, it really adds, it really gives you sense of elevation. And here you can get up and get some real nice shots and get the whole train in the shot, particularly when the trains are coming back from Lehman Place back to um, back to Strasbourg. You can take in all the Amish countryside and all the farmland that embodies this very beautiful part of um, Pennsylvania. So and then here on um, 90 is running into a really nice afternoon light. This is at the Espen Shade Road grade crossing, um, not far outside of East Strasbourg. And then here, this is at Lehman Place. This is um, just up the right away a little bit at Lehman Place, uh, working up the grade, uh, heading back up toward Carpenter's Crossing. So you have a little uh, milepost marker here. That's uh, a nice little prop. And then also another thing about too is if you walk up at Lehman Place a little bit, they still have this yard limit sign, which adds a nice little prop. And I recommend if the sun is out, uh, for the sun to be right, this is more of a morning shot. For the sun, sun I'm going to be right with the sun hits the yard limit sign to bring out the color of that and also to, uh, you know, uh, illuminate the smoke box of whatever steam engine is running on that um, particular day. And here, um, here's 90 um, running past the Cherry Crest Adventure Farm, known as Cherry Hill on the railroad with a farm all farm tractor uh, position there as like a little prop for um, passing trains um, at the Cherry Crest Adventure Farm. This is another good spot to shoot. This is the broad sweeping curve at Cherry Hill. So here 90 is working upgrade, um, running up the hill um, through the farm and nice light. So anyone who likes curve shots, uh, you get a nice shot of the train on the apex of the curve then coming at you right here as well. 
And uh, this is just down the way, I believe, from Espen Shade a little bit, walk down the right of way a little bit. So this is coming up out of the, the little tree tunnel that is um, near the Espen Shade area um, of Strasburg. And then here is their Norfolk and Western M class 480, uh, Mastodon class number 475. Um, so went back up this day and 475 was running. Uh, here it is um, reversing back to Coupland on the train and run back to East Strasburg. And then here it is in the similar spot where I got the 90. It's just left, just left Lehman Place and it's on its way um, back up to, on its way back up to uh, Strasburg. Then here, this visit, um, 90, um, 1611 um, came up, then um, Strasburg um, be began offering at the throttle experiences where uh, the public could pay a fee to operate the 90. And, and on this day, uh, the 90 was being used to run short train rides for folks from Lehman Place to just short of Carpenter's Crossing. Here are one of the runs um, just leaving Lehman Place with a um, member of the public um, at the throttle running, running the engine up the hill toward Carpenters. Just another view of 90 right there. And then here's 90 um, running past. Um, this is one of the uh, heavy um, wrecking cranes, which is owned by the Rare Museum of Pennsylvania in Strasburg that was moved down and put on the slate Lehman Place if you're ever down there. That adds for a nice photo prop as well to get in the background of your shots. And here's just, uh, again, 90 got creative with framing 90 in between the trees down here, just get uh, kind of creative with the shots. And then here 90 is, um, get ready to go on another run again. I'm a sucker for open, open cylinder cock shots. So here the 90 is, getting ready to leave with another uh, run for a member of the public getting to operate the locomotive for about a half an hour. Alex, is there yeah. any more talk of putting a Y in out there at Lehman Place? I talked to some uh, people there one time years ago about that. <clears throat> they said that was a consideration. They, do you know anything about that? Um, I, I do not know about that. I have not been up there um, since um, uh, I went up there to shoot 611 back in October. So I'm not sure uh, what the plans are um, with that. So again, I wish I had an answer for you on that, but I do not. Okay. Okay. And this is a real nice shot. So here, uh, 475 was um, doing the honors for the passenger train ride. And here, 90 is on the sidetrack, letting the uh, 475 um, pass with the um, with the regular train ride. And as you can see, um, this is when Strasburg um, put the, the headlight back on the center of the spoke box to give it, it its original look with how the engine looked when it was still working for the Norfolk and Western versus having the headlight uh, positioned on top of the smoke box. And personally, my personal opinion, I think the engine looks better with the headlight with the headlight centered versus up on top of the smoke box. And here the 90 is, um, this is what is referred to the Pumpkinville Turnpike um, on the railroad. Now this is private property. Um, I've gotten to know uh, the landowner here. And every time I've seen him, I've, I've asked him if it's okay if we could shoot on the road. And he says, as long as you don't go on the crops and stuff that you know he is fine with it. But I would not advise anybody that is up there to go and go on any farmer's property without asking if it's okay to use their land to um, to get shot. So if you can get permission, it definitely adds some shots that, that you cannot get if um, if you're just sticking to spots along the right of way at track level. Here the 475 is passing through, um, passing through um, Gross Pit and Grove, a little shot there. And here it is passing over, um, Pumpkinville Turnpike. This is the only bridge um, on the line. So nice shots there. Just more shots of it coming up the hill. And here it is. This is um, at the start of the day where the hostels are getting the engine ready to go. So was able to get um, a variety of different shots uh, of the engine, why it was being hostel around prior to running excursions for the day. And again, real nice shot of, um, I think, one of the crew members had just um, uh, blown out some water. So this is the residual steam um, coming from the water mist. And it just real adds for a real nice um, dramatic shot um, with the engine. And this engine back here, for those not familiar, this is um, a 282 Mikado tank engine that the Wilmington and Western engine had number 37 that ran back in 
the late eighties and early nineties. And then a group in California bought that then contracted Strasburg to uh, restore it. But, you know, no, Strasburg is a business. They, they will not restore any engine until they get some money in their pocket. So my guess is that group out in California who owns the 37 is in financial peril and they have not been able to allocate and provide the funds to get the 37 in operating condition, which is the plan again. But so um, that's what that engine is um, back here. And I want to just get this, um, want to get this in as a little uh, backdrop for the 475 at Strasburg Yard. And here it is with their uh, SW8 A618, which is um, their normal freight power when Strasburg interchanges freight with Norfolk Southern off the Keystone line. Um, and this is on top of the coal pile. So I got a nice um, upper level view of 475 um, with their uh, SW8 um, A618 um, right here. All right, now moving on to um, Stewartstown Railroad. Um, this was um, when the Gramlings um, brought their 85 through Stewartstown Railroad. This was back in uh, June 19th of last year. And um, they ran the engine on the train rides. They only run a, a, on a few miles of track from downtown Stewartstown, um, just past the um, Iron Bridge Road Cross. And so here is the, uh, the 85 right here back um, in the woods, not far from where at, this is the end of the line where they have usable track, which is not far past the um, Iron Bridge Road Crossing. Then uh, here it is. This is um, headed back to Stewartstown. This is passing. This is their engine shed right here. So here the engine is um, passing. Um, your engine shed head back to Stewartstown. And um, this is um, this is behind um, a shopping complex. Um, yeah, this is behind a shopping complex that you can get um, that you can get shots of the engine um, right along there. So, so yeah, I believe this is according to my notes. Yep. So this is yep. This is um, paralleling Bailey Drive. So if you want these shots, this parallels um, Bailey Drive. And there's a little strip mall right there if you want that shot. Then here it is. This is back um, again toward at the end of their line, right past Iron Bridge Road. I'm taking a pause for heading back to Stewartstown. Then this is the Iron Bridge itself. Um, this this is crosses um, uh, Valley Road. So nice little steel girder bridge here. So here the engine is approaching that. And here is a um, wire view of the engine um, coming at you. Now this is shot. Um, this is this is shot behind a um, a back when I was there. This is a um, a neighborhood that was still being built. This is um, um, behind the Gemcraft Homes uh, Bridgeview development. So they had townhomes and uh, single family homes that were being built. So this this offered a um, a uh, elevated view, which was kind of neat. A nice smoke plume from the engine. And then this is uh, actually their engine house where they keep their 44 tonner. And I think they might they might keep their Plymouth Mighty Mo in there as well. And I just wanted to show you where you were, um, showed Surrettstown when, when the railroad was founded in 1884. So I wanted to incorporate that in the shot as well. And then again, just some more miscellaneous shots of the engine um, on the few miles of usable line, of usable track they have right now. And then also we stayed and we did um, some stacked nice shots of the engine. So here it is with the Stewartstown Railroad Depot. And then here it is, it's um, a blue hour. And we did some night shot. This is, this is all done with long exposure and using um, uh, handheld, old, old school handheld flash guns, um, not speed lights, not um, alien bees, which a lot of photographers have. So we were able to fire off some uh, nice um, night shots there. So really nice blue sky and a little nice illumination of the engine. Yep. All right, so I also threw in some um, Northern Central Railway. This was back in um, November where the Northern Central was um, uh, running a Christmas tree train to the Brickers Tree Farm. So here the engine is. This is plastic in the, the restaurant, the Glen Rock Mill Inn in downtown um, Glen Rock. And uh, these are the only photos I have of York 17. So I kind of threw them in here as a bonus. And then uh, here the engine is um, in New Freedom next to their GP9 uh, 6076. So um, 
uh, GP9 was using was being used on the regular train rides for the day, and and then um, York 17 was being prepared for the Christmas tree train for um, folks to go down and get their Christmas tree train. So um, on the way down, they dropped the folks off at the um, at the Brickers Christmas tree farm in Sightsville, and then uh, they took the engine down and wired it. Or, or not wide, they, they ran the engine from one end of the train on. This is on, on the return back to Sightsville, passing the uh, Hanover Junction um, station right here. And then um, here's just a side-by-side -side shot of the engine seeing uh, New Freedom awaiting departure to um, go down the line to Sightsville. And then um, this is in Railroad, Pennsylvania. Even though this is in November, uh, we have some nice um, orange fall foliage still hanging on, which adds a nice color to the scene there. And then this is why the train was stopped at Sightsville, why uh, folks were going to pick their Christmas trees and uh, had a nice house to add as a uh, prop on the left-hand side. And then just a side-by-side -side shot of varying angles of the engine while I was sitting there. And here's a going away shot to have a view of which way the engine will be traveling once all the folks um, come back um, to come back to get on the train the board to go back to new freedom and this is just up the track so people have gotten on again passing two nice uh trees with uh turning red leaves um in sightsville um headed back um toward new freedom and this is shot from the granary road grade crossing right here okay of course um um I had to document 611 when it came um, to Strasbourg, and all these were taken between October of 2019 when the engine first visited up until its most recent stint, which when it ran um, uh, last ran up to October 20, uh, 2021, which was last year. So this was shot from the Carpenter's graveyard. Uh, this was on, um, I believe it was Pete Laro's photo tour that he did with the 611. Um, using period freight cars. So here it is um, shooting from the Carpenter's Grade Yard. And this is an, an at track level shot. I believe the engine is backing down for another photo run by for the photographers on the, the charter um, itself. And this is um, shot with a really long zoom lens from the Carpenter's Grade Crossing. And here's another view of the engine approaching, all shot from the Carpenter's um, Graveyard. Then here, this is the uh, the people participating in Pete Laro's um, photo charter. Uh, it was to my understanding, the woman on the tractor was a model and she was hired to pose on the tractor for this is event. So I just want to kind of document the scene, some of the folks that were um, participating with the photo charter um, um, that was going on during this weekend. Oops, no, I don't want that. All right, now this was done. This was late October of 20. Um, this was, I think the last weekend before it went, went back down to Spencer. And this is when it was offering more people a chance to um, operate the 611. And um, so we were able to get shots of it across uh, the tracks, just doing short runs from Lehman Place up to just short of Carpenters. And, and these are the best shots you could do on those short runs. It really limits your uh, ability to, to um, um, get good shots. It pretty much restricts you to the Lehman Place area, which is right here. And at the end of the day, um, this is back when 611 uh, came back to be put away for the night and did some more long exposures. So here the is, is the engine taking the water. Again, this is all taken with um, uh, long exposure. Um, I don't think we had any, we used, we had any flash on hand for this. We might have, I can't remember, but we, I know we had a flashlight to try and help um, uh, light up the engine for night shots, but oops, wrong way. But, um, but yeah, here we go with, um, some more night shots of the engine, real, real nice. And we got a couple, uh, I guess, crew members might be checking the ash pan of the engine um, right here. But while I was here seeing Doc it offered some really nice, um, nice shots to be had. So um, and these are my, some of my first time doing night shots. This is when I really started getting the hang of, of doing um, long exposures. And here is an example of cows running away. So, um, the engine is not perfectly framed here, but I was able to get the engine coming out from the trees and got the cows in frame before they ran completely out of the picture. Again, this is shot from the uh, Carpenter's Grade Yard. So here's the um, same shot with the cows out of view. They ran up the hill, scared of the train. So here it is um, on being used in regular service on the Strasbourg Railroad. 
Now this, this is coming up the grade at Cherry Crest Farm. This shot right here. Now, I, I'll, there's a lot of, you know, um, despite all the clutter that's on the farm, this is probably the best shot that I got the entire time when, when the engine was up there in 2021 with the smoke plume. I tried to go back to that spot and recreate that shot with a friend, a friend and I, we never were able to recreate that. So I'm really glad we were able to get that shot. And again, it never was to be recreated again. This is one of my favorite shots that I got the entire time we went up there all of last year to get out when it was running on the weekends, you know, between um, April and October. Here it is, um, same shot with the train um, approaching. I was able to get a, a wide angle um, with the tractor path they used to give tractor rides on the farm itself. And here it is again. This is with permission from the farmer. This is the 611 crossing uh, the Opossum Creek, uh, uh, excuse, not the, excuse me, the Pumpkinville Turnpike um, Bridge. And then here's the yard limit sign again. So I had to get J with um, the, the yard limit sign again. So this is um, on a return trip out of Lehman Place, heading back uh, towards Strasburg. And then more shots of the engine running up the hill um, past the farmland, getting ready to cross Pumpkinville Turnpike. And also uh, there's a lot of ponds you can use on farm lands here. So we got the, the, the cows in the shot here in this nice pond and farmhouses. So real, real nice picturesque shots with the J up in beautiful Amish country of Strasbourg. Here, um, different shot, was able to rotate a little bit, get more of the pond, um, nice farmhouse in there with the J uh, heading back to Strasbourg. And here it is at J Tower. As anyone know, J Tower used to be at Lemoyne, Pennsylvania. And here the engine is at one of the ends of the run before it couples all or uh, uncouples from the train and heads back to couple on on the rear end to make another run to Lehman Place. Um, another nice shot of the engine passing some of the many silos you can get um, up in Strasburg. So really, really made out well, I think, with um, its tenure up there um, running last year before it underwent its five-year inspection, which is, I think, just finished up just not long ago up in Strasburg. Just a couple stack shots of the engine. I believe this is at the end of the day. And then, uh, of course, more shots of it passing the yard limit sign coming up the grade out of Lehman Place. Uh, this is coming up out of the tree tunnel at um, Espen Shade. So uh, when the sun's out, you get nice late afternoon shots there of the trains coming out of Espen Shade. Um, same shot, just a wider angle shot of the train coming up. And then um, a nice shot. Um, this, I think we um, we walked in from, or actually we walked down from Carpenter's Crossing down the right away a little bit just to get a different shot. So back there, you can barely see the, uh, the crossing signals for Carpenter's Crossing. So this is a straightaway that the trains run on just after Carpenter's before they make that right-hand turn to go through Gross Picnic Grove. And I really like this shot. Um, got the Lehigh Valley RDC number 40 at the Rare Museum of PA in the late evening, one evening. So I want to incorporate that in the shot. Real nice afternoon light on both the engine and the RDC. So that, that was a neat shot to get as well. Then here the engine is. Nice big uh, plume of black smoke. More um, livestock and cows coming across a, um, a uh, nice field uh, here in uh, Strasbourg. Again, here it is. This is again in the late afternoon. This is at Cherry Crest Farm again. Again, trying to recreate that shot I showed you folks a little while ago with that excessive plume of smoke. We're going to grade, but again, no dice done to be had. Not near as much smoke um, coming out as the train works up the grade um, through Cherry Crest Farm and Cherry Hill. And here's the shot, nice shot again. Um, nice plume of smoke coming out, shot from the um, from the Cherry uh, Chris Farm. I think, Bill, I think you're with me on this trip. I think we ran, ran in all of Tarme, and I think we were all here staying at, at the Carpenter's Graveyard um, to get the shot. I believe this was shot in mid-July of 2021. And this is the shot at the passing sign in Mainline right across Picnic Grove. Uh, I believe the engine stopped here to either pick up or drop off pastors wishing to have picnics at the Grove, which is off to the left behind um, the engine. And this is at the uh, uh, Red Caboose Motel. If the wind's just right, you can get 
um, old glory here. If there's no wind and, and all the, the flags are pointing downward, you get a real nice shot with the flags pointing down, but it's really hard to do with, with no, uh, you have to have no wind there. And um, it was hard getting the, not getting uh, a cloud out by clouds there as well. Here's a shot I got lucky with, with most of the flags being pointed down with the engine uh, coming back on a return run to Strasbourg. And here it is with their little 10 ton uh, Plymouth engine, number one. So nice little prop I had within the uh, uh, yard at, at Strasbourg. And here the J is another angle, different angle of the J coming out of the woods at Lehman Place, just up the tracks. And here's a side by side. This is um, a little bit farther up the tracks, coming up the grade at Cherry Crest Farm. Again, try to hit different spots so it wasn't all the same angle. This is a little bit farther up the grade, um, working up to the uh, Cherry Crest uh, Adventure Farm. And then here is that broad sweeping curve. I got 90, and again, uh, many years back, so I wanted to get uh, 611 with it there as well. So here it is on the apex of the curve. And here it is, it is coming up um, closer to the photographer, and this is it. Um, this is not far um, down from Recaboose. Uh, I think this is within a penny storm ground. I think it just started to rain or was about to rain in this shot, as you can tell by the, uh, the gloomy skies. And here's another nice shot where you get some farming apparatus that was left in the field with um, 611 coming down the grade um, not far out of uh, East Strasburg Station. So I was able to walk up and get that shot as well. And um, here's a shot that I want to get. You get the two um, farm silos off to the right. Nice plume of spoke. This is, again, a little bit walk, a little bit of a walk down the right of way um, from Espen Shade Road grade crossing. And then um, here's another shot. This is a zoom, uh, a zoom shot of the J coming around the curve into the straightaway at Groff's for, to make another stop to um, um, pick up and drop off people wishing to picnic. A uh, shot of the engine while it was sitting there. And then just um, some more shots at Espen Shades to try to get a lot of these shots to maximize the time while I was at Strasburg. So you never know if and when these things will happen again. And there's just some more shots of the engine at J Tower, one with the cylinder cocks open, one with the train um, uncoupled from the train, getting ready to go past the switch and reverse onto the other end. And here is a um, broadside shot of the train um, hanging up the small grade at um, Carpenter's Crossing again. And then this is a nice view where you can get um, people's farmland, a uh, barn, you get people, um, I guess, hanging some towels to be air dried. So real nice shot discovered when I was up there. Um, nothing special about this shot, just an across the field shot of uh, 611 trying to add to the different uh, varying shots. And then got creative with this shot with the corn stalks on each side, just wanted to do something a little creative and different. And, um, frame the train um, that way. Uh, more views with more livestock that were, that played nice and um, stayed in position to why the train passed. And then here it is um, coming up at Espen Shade Road again, late afternoon, late. And then this was uh, at and twilight. This is the engine coming back on one of the last runs um, in a day, heading up, the, heading up the grade, real nice. Uh, pretty colors in the evening sky and um, nice plume of smoke coming from the engine um, uh, working up the hill at Carpenters. And while we we're there, also um, did some more night photography. Uh, again, long exposure with flash bulbs and just um, fired off a couple of night shots of the uh, of the engine. All right, here we go now. Um, this won't be too long here, New Hope. I've only had a couple of visits up here. But um, this is New Hope in Ivyland. Now I have to give some credits to my fiance. Uh, this was back in um, 2018. Uh, my fiance um, took me up here to celebrate my birthday. My birthday is in mid-December and she took me up here in all expenses or an all expensive, uh, expenses paid trip to ride the train hotel and took me a nice dinner and we rode the train here. So here is their 280 number 40. I'm getting ready uh, in the yard prior to uh, our train ride here it is uh, shifting past the New Hope Station, get ready to tie on to the train um, for the day. Again, shifting around the, uh, the station. And then this was the next day I convinced her, bless her heart, I convinced Kelsey to let me um, chase um, the next day's train before we headed back 
uh, let's get one shot. This is crossing the Akaton Creek um, right here. And this was back, um, this was back in October of last year. This was on Halloween weekend. And um, this was shot um, around the curve from the Aquaton Road grade crossing. So there is quite a bit of fall, fall um, coverage left here from fall foliage. Got a real nice shot of 40 um, coming through the woods and through all the nice um, fall color. There is a zoom shot, then a wide angle of the engine coming around the curve. Then here the engine is um, getting service in between runs. I mean, they ran, they, they ran probably close to 15 runs this day between their GP30, uh, 2198, and number 40. They were running until 10 o'clock that night. I mean, they ran real, real, real late. So um, it, it really afforded many different nice um, photo opportunities. Here the engine is side by side with one of the engine's cabooses. And here it is again, a nice day crossing Aquatong Creek. And here the engine is um, at the station ready to do another um, trip. This day, they're only running between New Hope and Lahaska on the railroad. Then this shot, I didn't realize how well it turned out before, um, before the end, but this is the West Ferry Street grade crossing and really liked how the um, stone masonry and this, and this wall added to it. You had the nice orange from the fallen leaves and the accents of the light fixtures. So I really, really, really liked how this shot came out. Didn't realize how well it came out until I put it on the computer and, and took it to um, some um, editing. All right, I promise this will be the last part of the um, of my presentation. Um, this is documenting the Rain and Northern 212 restoration, both um, the solo trips it made back in May of this year and July, and then this past Saturday with the double headers. So uh, here the engine is, and by the way, this is the first time I've ever seen the 2102 again, back when it was uh, defunct back in the early nineties, that was only probably about three or four years old and what, you know, what I was looking at. So this is my first time I was able to get uh, the engine running. So I was real happy to get that. This is um, splitting the, the trilight signals at Mooresville crossing uh, Main Street. So real nice. Real good uh, sunlight here in the morning. Uh, great props to try light. So um, uh, great for the photographer here. Um, uh, Alex Mays was here. I, I saw him driving down. He was at this spot. This is at um, Orwigsburg, otherwise known as Molino on the uh, on the railroad. And here the O2 is, this is a zoom shot of the O2 uh, splitting more tri -light signals um, at Molino. So I did a zoom shot of that. And then went wide and got the small station structure here at Molino uh, with the O2 off here uh, to the right. And uh, this is another good, despite this being overcast, this is another good spot um, on the westward run from Reading to Jim Thorpe, where the light will be good in the morning to get shots if anyone's interested in doing that on upcoming trips for the O2 uh, in, se in September. And here the engine is at Barnesville. It was raining pretty good here. And I must say, this is probably the loudest between the whistle and the engine working here. This is probably the loudest I've ever heard a steam engine work. It sounded fantastic. It was loud enough to split your ears. And I loved it. You could hear the engine for at least five minutes before it got there. It was working so hard. And with the rain, there was a lot of slippage going on with the driver. So it really made for uh, a dramatic scene, whether you were doing um, photography or both you know, uh, video and audio. And here it is. This is passed underneath the uh, tunnel Nesquehaunting, passed underneath uh, Route 93, um, the Hunter Street underpass in um, Nesquehaunting. And this is on our, the return run, heading back toward Reading. Um, this is at the Industrial Road uh, grade crossing, the other spot where um, the sun's really good, as you see, really well illuminated on the nose and real good spot here. Here's a zoom shot of it, a zoom shot of it. And then here is a uh, wide angle shot of it about to hit the grade crossing. Um, and here are two different shots of it. This is um, just south of Tamaqua, and this is known as Zaner's on the railroad. And here are side by side shots. The shot on the left is the zoom shot I have of it. And the shot on the right is when I went wide angle of the train approaching again, really well lit in the afternoon. Um, pretty much both ways, uh, going west in the morning, going east in the afternoon. The sun is uh, fairly favorable for um, both ways. So got a real nice shot here. And then here the engine is passing the Mooresville again. This is um, crossing 
Shui Road um, in the distance, and it's not far. Um, next town will pass through be Leesport, then it'll terminate in Reading for the day. And here it is. Here's the scene of Reading. You can see the gobs of rail fans that either chased the train or got off the train right here on the frame in the left. And then why it, um, you know, detrained people on segments, it offered a couple of different um, uh, photo angles that you could get in this little cut between the, the bridges here. Now, this was the trip back in July, on July 2nd of this year. So here the train is just outside of Reading. This is passing through um, Dauberville again, um, shot from the Bellman's uh, Church Road grade crossing. Um, again, uh, decent uh, sunlight here. So here the engine is um, not far out of Reading on its way to um, Jim Thorpe. And this is more of a grab shot. Uh, this is along uh, Lowland Road. This is more of a grab shot where we didn't realize we uh, beat the train. This is in Hamburg and the train's not far out of Reading. So once we found out we uh, had beaten the train there, we were able to park the car real quick and uh, get out and uh, nail the shot. Not bad for a grab shot. So that was kind of a, a bonus turn in for the day. And uh, again, this is um, this is uh, Miller's Crossing known on the railroad in the town of Orwigsburg, Pennsylvania. So as you can see here, um, you have a nice red barn to add as a prop in the back in the backdrop and adds for a nice scene. So this is just after the train did a brief um, passenger pickup um, in Port Clinton. So here it is on its way back, continuing to um, Jim Thorpe. And uh, here it is. This is um, still considered Tamaqua according to Google Maps, but this is considered hometown on the railroad. And this is at the Marion Avenue uh, grade crossing. And here you have a nice little um, older uh, two-car garage and some nice tree here to ice the prop. And when you get here, you could hear the engine at least 10 minutes before it got there. So you definitely knew she was coming. And uh, this was a nice shot to be had as well right here. Now, um, again, it's not another bonus shot. This is in, um, this was in um, Nesquahoning. Um, uh, this was shirt, uh, shot at, um, Merman Avenue. So um, this is coming around a curve in Esquihalning. So the train's not too far out of uh, Jim Thorpe. So I got a nice uh, zoom in shot of the engine uh, coming through Esquihalning here. And then a bonus, um, since it was such a long uh, layover at um, at Jim Thorpe, uh, Steamtown's only about an hour drive from the Jim Thorpe area. So we ran over to Steamtown and got their Baldwin 060 uh, 26, um, doing the short little shuttle runs where they run from uh, the Steamtown Historic Site to just past the old Lackawanna uh, train station turned Rasson Hotel now, which is neat to get. So here's a zoom shot, and here it is passing underneath um, the old um, signals that still stand on the Delaware Lackawanna Main in um, Scranton. So it was a nice little bonus, something to do for those who chase to keep in mind during the long layover in Jim Thorpe. Here we are catching the engine back. This is shot from the Church Road grade crossing. Again, real nice light in the afternoon and the engine's coming around the curve here. So it was able to get a nice zoom level shot of the train coming around the curve. And then it was able to uh, zoom out and do a broad level view. Oh, it's again, another nice place to go to with nice lighting. Again, this is the Church Road grade cross in Tamaqua. And then this is at the River Road grade crossing. Again, this, this is still according to Google Maps, so I did my research. This is still considered in the borough of Tamaqua. So this is crossing uh, River Road um, just south of Tamaqua, headed back toward um, Reading. Again, this is back at Miller's Crossing um, in Orwigsburg. And I wanted to get the barn on the return shot too, but uh, two rail fans had already gotten there first. And if you would have shot up from along the road to incorporate in the barn, then you would have had you know, two people in your shot, which I didn't want to do. So, you know, to be curious to make a photo line, I just had to go down next to the two gentlemen and make a photo line here. It's still a real nice shot. It had this big tree to frame on the left, but uh, my preference here would have been to have with the barn in the foreground, but, you know, no such luck and a shot for another time. It's still a real, real nice shot. Very pleased with how it came out. And then here on the left, the engine is uh, coming back through, um, uh, Mooresville again, uh, splitting the, the uh, running tri-lights or the old tri-light signals crossing the Main Street crossing. And here the engine is pulling into Reading Outer Depot to detrain passengers from another happy day of 
train riding. Again, here's just the scene. Here's the old tower. Here's the station. Some rail fans waiting to greet the 2102. And then just got some more shots of the engine why it was um, detraining um, riders um, in a couple of different um, segments. And just got creative with one of the uh, bridge walls here with the engine. And here's the last set of shots. This is from um, Saturday. Um, this is in Leesport. Now, if anyone's familiar with Leesport, down off the tracks here to the left, they have two derelict silos, which you can incorporate in your shot. And that's what I had in mind here. But a bunch of people had set up right next to those silos, thus taking away that shot. So we had to relocate a little uh, ways down the right of way here. It turned out, turned out to be a decent shot, but you know, not what I had in mind. And, and there was no real time to relocate to get set up and get a shot of the train. So we had to make two here but you can still get creative with the with the leaves and, and so still you know, a good shot but not what i wanted to you know have in mind for that particular shot uh here's a shot of molino again this is uh a little bit farther down from my from my previous shot of 2102 was 2102 uh was and uh so this was during the double header and i wanted to emphasize getting shots of both the uh 2102 and 462 425 so here's a nice shot of it um, uh, passing through uh, Molino, Orwoodsburg again, headed toward um, Jim Thorpe. And here uh, we go in Barnesville again on a much drier day. Got the 425 in the trailing position and 2102 on the lead. Uh, blast something great in Barnesville again. Got some real nice um, audio of the train about five minutes before it. Uh, you could see it coming up the straightaway there. And this is on the way back. Uh, this is, again, at Church Road. This is farther up the street, though. And um, the property owners have a real nice um, antique uh, uh, pickup truck right here to um, add to the shot. So um, real nice shot. Both incorporate the 425 in in 2102. So I saw other people get that shot on the main July run. So I said, hey, I want to get that shot. Let's find that truck and let's have at it get that shot. So we went ahead and got that. And then our last shot of the day was back at uh, Miller's Crossing. Um, this is a shot from Summer Valley Road. And this is just a side shot showing both the 425 and 2102, a side shot. And then a going more of a three quarters going away shot about ready to cross right here is the Miller's Crossing Road crossing, um, crossing the main line. And here just we will frame it with this um, tree right here. So that is it. Hopefully I didn't bore you by too much. I'm welcome to any questions or comments. I will stay on to, to answer any question comments, but that is my uh, STEAM program of photographs that I have had between starting stills back in 2015 up until uh, present day. So I greatly appreciate the invitation to host a session and I'm open to any type of comments or question folks uh, may have. Thank yeah, you, Alex. Alex.